What's up, Niner Faithful? Johnny Dell here with another video about our 49ers. In this episode, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Leo position. Who's going to play the Leo? I'm sure that's a question that were, a lot of us are asking. I've seen it float around the internet a little bit. I know John Lynch and Kyle Shannon are probably going to be asked this over the next few weeks, and I wanted to give a little bit of insight into what their answers are going to be like. Because I have a feeling I know what their answers are going to be, and it might confuse us just a little bit. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the history of the Leo and what the role is in our defense. So to understand what the Leo was, originally it was the elephant in George Seifert's defense. And George Seifert played a 3-4 defense. It's, it's a little bit different than our 4-3 that we play. And what, so what he had was you have three defensive linemen, two defensive ends and a nose tackle, and then four, four linebackers. So he had a weak side backer, which he called the whip. He had a strong side backer, which he called the buck. The mic was on the strong side. That was your, your strong side inside linebacker. And your weak side inside linebacker was called the plugger. And then you'd have a strong safety, two corners, and your free safety. Now, when Charles Haley came on, what George Seifert ended up doing was he created a new position for him. It wasn't really that new. It was just a specific role. He called it the elephant. And the reason why he called it the elephant was because they had a concept called the eagle concept. And what the eagle concept was, what George Seifert liked to do before Haley came on was he would normally drop the strong side linebacker into coverage. So if this linebacker was on the strong side, he was going to, excuse me, let me do this in black. He was going to drop into coverage. You would have these guys go this way and the weak side backer was going to come on a pass rush. Now, the reason why he created a new role is most of the time, what, he, what would happen is if this tight end went in motion over to this side, these linebackers wouldn't shift spots. The guys who were on either side would stay where they are, but all of a sudden he became the buck and he became the whip. And so this side would rush and this side would drop. Now, he wasn't all the time, but most of the time, if that, that strong side linebacker was going to drop into coverage. If he was on a pass rush, his, his first job was actually to jam the tight end on the line of scrimmage. The eagle concept, what that was, is it said that if this tight end goes in motion, whoever started as the weak side outside linebacker, if this tight end shifted or went into motion onto the other side, he wasn't going to change his responsibilities. He was going to be what George Seifert called stay in charge which meant that he was going to rush the passer and this guy would drop. And so it didn't matter if this tight, tight end shifted or the strength of the formation shifted. The coverage would simply stay the same and they would, they would roll responsibilities. So that the idea was that you had Charles Haley rushing the quarterback every single time because if they made him, you know, lined him up on the weak side every time, well, all it, an offense has to do is come out, put him on one side and then motion a tight end across and he's going to drop into coverage. So to keep Haley from dropping in coverage and let him do what he was best at, which was rush the passer, he put he left him in charge in that eagle concept, and so he created an E-word, uh, the elephant position, for Charles Haley. So let's fast forward here. Then Pete Carroll joins the 49ers as a defensive coordinator, and then he ends up taking this same idea of, putting your best pass rusher, start trying to get him on the weak side of the formation because the whole purpose was to get Haley into a, a favorable pass rushing matchup on the weak side of the line because that way he wouldn't have to try and jam the tight end. And so sometimes they'd start him out on the strong side and so that if an offense was, was motioning that tight, tight end every time, they could start him on the strong side and now they either have to chain, flip their play or they're going to motion him away from, from Charles Haley. They were always playing a game of trying to get him onto the weak side. So Pete Carroll comes along, and he takes the same idea of, I want to get my best pass rusher onto the flex side or the weak side of the line, but he plays a 4-3 under, which is similar in alignment by the time you get the five-man front to a 3-4. It's just a little bit different. But what that's going to usually be is you have your Leo over here. I'm going to put him as L-E. You, you're going to have um, you're going to have a three technique over here with a defensive tackle. We're going to have a one technique on the strong side with a defensive tackle, and then you're going to have what we usually call the big end on your strong side. And then your Sam backer is going to be over here. Your Mike's going to be 
right around here and your will is going to be right about here. So th in the end, it looks very similar to what George Seifert ran, but it's a 4-3. He, he just basically said, I'm going to designate a man as an actual end all the time. And that's why George Seifert said that Haley was a hybrid defensive end slash outside linebacker. He would play an outside linebacker position, but had all the responsibilities of a D end. So here now, and then one thing also I want to mention here, this is in base. So anytime that the offense comes out, in anything less than three wide receivers. So it's going to be you know, two running backs, one tight end, one running back, two tight ends, one running back, three tight ends, you know, whatever, two running backs, two tight ends. Whatever personnel puts you in a, in a favorable run matchup is going to be the base formation. And so when George Seifert, or sorry, excuse me, Pete Carroll came along, he then moved on from the 49ers, and he was still using this term, the elephant, that he'd gotten from George Seifert, and he said he drafted a kid in the late 90s from, that was originally from Africa, and they drafted him as a defensive end pass rusher to play the elephant position, and they said that when he, the kid called home, he, Pete Carroll said he was standing there, the kid called home and he's talking to his dad, and he says, yeah, they're, they're having me be an elephant, and his dad didn't quite understand what was going on, so they, they realized it was kind of silly because they weren't using the eagle concept anymore, they didn't need the E word, so they just changed the E word to an L word, and called it the Leo. So it's the exact same position. And what is the purpose of the Leo? The Leo is to be on the weak side of the formation. And so in base, the reason why your, your Leo has to actually be a good pass rusher, but also has to be able to stand up well in, against the run. The reason why is because we're gonna, if we come out in this 4-3 under, and again, they ha the offense has this, posi this option when you put your your best pass rusher on the weak side of the line, they can just shift this tight end over and they can either keep him in the block or have him chip or whatever to slow down your best pass rusher. Also, they can bring this guy over and they can now bring him favorable matchups in the run and double team him. If he's not able to stand up to that, he's gonna get pushed around the field and you now have a liability on the field, not a strength on the field. So when they were talking about when we picked up D Ford, they said Solomon Thomas will still play the Leo in base, D Ford, but D Ford will be a Leo. They weren't lying. They were, they were saying the same thing, that in base, it didn't make sense to put D Ford here because he doesn't have the, the size and strength to stand up to double teams from a tight end and a tackle that he could face. Because sometimes what we'll do is instead of coming out in our 4-3 under, we come out in a 4-3 over where we start with the Leo and, and our weak, peep, weak side defenders on the strong side. The idea is if the offense has been motioning that tight end across every time, they're doing this as part of their plays, well then you come out in an over and you anticipate the shift so that you will be in your favorable matchup when the, plays snap, when the ball snapped. So all this to say, in base, you have to have somebody who can stand up well against the run, but is also hopefully going to be your best pass rusher because if you do get them on the weak side of the line, they're going to have a favorable matchup, matchup and be a problem for the offense. To me, in base, that is Nick Bosa. That guy, the guy has the size and the strength. I mean, just look what he did at the combine. He has the build to sit here and be a base Leo and do it very, very well. That's going to allow somebody like Eric Armstead or Solomon Thomas to move over to big end, maybe even play some one tech or three tech and allow Buckner to move around as well so that they, they can start moving people around. You can put Solomon Thomas here at three technique, put uh, DeForest Buckner over here at big end, and now you have two very good pass rushers coming off the edge because Buckner's the kind of guy who, even if he can't beat this guy around the edge, he's so strong, he's so powerful, he's going to be able to, to just bull rush this tackle and it becomes a problem for the defense or for the offense. So that covers who's going to be the Leo in the base formations. I still believe when we go to nickel package that that now it's going to be D Ford. And again, I think those positions can be somewhat interchangeable, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit here. So say the, the offense comes out, and now they have three wide receivers. Okay, We're still going to have our safeties. Now we're going to have a slot corner. Excuse me, let me put this in black. We're going to have a slot corner, and we're going to have an end, defensive tackle, and defensive tackle, and an end out here. Okay, This is going to be 
our nickel formation. Now, one thing that we've done is when we come out in nickel, if the offense ever motions this back out into the, out of the backfield, and it's a very obvious, an absolute obvious passing situation, what we do is we immediately will shift into a wide nine where these defensive tackles will get really wide and these ends will get really wide. All the Leo means at this point is who's ever away from the strength of the formation. So that would be this guy over here. Most of the time, what you're gonna see with this, this really affects more the responsibilities of your defensive tackle who's sitting right here. Because in our defense, in nickel, the Leo, what he often has is this defensive tackle being out really wide, he's gonna take an inside move and he's gonna try and occupy these two linemen. So when he takes this move, he's gonna come inside the guard and he's gonna try and grab the center. What that does is that gives this, this end a two-way go on the tackle. He can go around him or he can go inside of him because this defensive tackle has come inside, occupied both these players, and gives him space to have a two-way go. These two guys don't, won't necessarily do that. The, what this does now, because th these, these two players have been occupied, is you're gonna have one-on-ones with these two players. And so these two players will also have, they'll have to determine who's gonna, who's gonna make, take what kind of a move, because if he takes an outside move and he takes an inside move, they cancel out their pass rush. They have to figure out who, which direction they're gonna go if they're gonna make a move. This defensive tackle can take an inside move and he can have a two-way move, but the problem with that becomes if, if he takes an outside move and he takes an inside move, you've opened up a lane for the quarterback to escape. So these guys have to be a little bit more disciplined in their pass rush moves and more predetermined, whereas your, your Leo is gonna have the two-way go. In the end, it's not that big of a difference because you end up, both of these guys, if they can, take, if they can both win either outside or in, you're in a good position. This could be Nick Bosa, that can be D Ford, it doesn't matter. You can put this as Solomon Thomas, you can put this as DeForest Buckner. Most of the time last year when Solomon Thomas was inside, this was Cassius Marsh, and Solomon Thomas would take this inside move, it's what they call the plugger roll, that he's trying to occupy two offensive linemen, and then he'll sit here and shadow the quarterback and spy, and you know, whichever way he goes, he's gonna not let, him, not let the quarterback run up the middle, and it gives his end a two-way go. Cassius Marsh just couldn't win, that was the problem. But now that we have two guys who can do it, what that means is that also means it's going to be an unexpected role. Is that they don't have to make this to where it's the strong side or weak side uh, defender. They can put the sign the plugger role to this defensive tackle and give him a two-way go. Now it's a little bit harder if the tight end's right there. That's usually why we want it on the weak side, but it doesn't have to be. Either of these guys are good enough to do that. And then it means that these guys can do whatever they want. And then they can also do stunts off that. So in... In nickel, I really see it D Ford probably more than, than Nick Bosa, but it could be Nick Bosa as well. So what you're going to see over the next several months is when people are asked, who's going to play the Leo? Who's going to be the Leo? They're probably going to have a mixture of D Ford, Nick Bosa, and maybe even Solomon Thomas in base formations because he can stand up so well against the run. But this is kind of what that looks like. I wanted to try a little bit different of a video here. Uh, part of it is my other videos, the NFL is as a claim for copyright and I don't make any money off it so I want to try a different video that could be just as informative help our help you understand some of the the concepts of the game and I could also uh, be able to make, do my channel um, and make some more videos off it but let me know in the comments how you like the video if you like this format I can do more formats like this talking about passing concepts coverages uh, different things kind of football one-on-one -on -one or more in detail or if you say, dude, stick to the video breakdowns of the plays, that's cool. I, I won't take any offense to anything. But I look forward to seeing our 49ers this year, and thanks for watching.